Thank you, Kurt. Good morning. Everybody hear me okay? All right. I'm not used to being double mic'd. I could be triple mic. Uh, I'm Rick Stoll, University of Nebraska. I've got a bunch of names up there under the title, and uh, not going to introduce everybody um, for the sake of time. Uh, we've got 15 minutes before lunch starts. Uh, but I, several of those people are here. They're all team members and uh, very much engaged in, in what's going on here. Uh, on behalf of the Livestock and Poultry Environmental Learning Center, and specifically the Animal Agriculture and the Changing Climate uh, Project, uh, I do welcome you here. Thank you for participating, attending this, and uh, helping us continue the uh, dialogue on environmental sustainability in general, and specifically climate effects with, uh, with dairy production in this case. I do want to do a couple things. Uh, I specifically want to uh, give thanks as, um, as a primary sponsor of this uh, conference, I want to thank Jenny Pronto and Kurt Gooch for all their efforts putting this together. And then uh, just take 10 minutes or so here and introduce our project and um, talk about the capacity building that we've heard is necessary. And uh, we can't do it all, but, but that's the focus of our project. So the Animal Agriculture and the Changing Climate Project is uh, a project of the National Livestock and Poultry Environmental Learning Center. And if you're not familiar with the Livestock and Poultry Environmental Learning Center, some of the uh, participants in here are wearing that uh, shirt. Thank you for doing that. Um, it is a national uh, group uh, of experts in extension uh, who work with livestock and poultry production and specifically working on environmental issues associated with animal production. And so one of the things we've taken on is looking at climate and how that um, it influences environmental sustainability. Uh, this specific project is uh, funded through a grant through the National Institute of Food and Agriculture, or NIFA. Uh, University of Nebraska is the lead on the project, but uh, most of the team members and much, of, much if not most of the work is going on um, by our regional partners, and I've got those listed down there. Um, several of those team members are here. If you see one of these uh, names on a name tag, please introduce yourself to them. Ask them how they're uh, contributing to this project in particular. and. Um, we want to get some dialogue going there. So one of the things uh, in terms of, of needs is this need for capacity building. If we look at extension educators, which are our leading uh, target audience here, uh, many of them did not want to engage in conversations or, or work with their clientele on uh, this issue. And when we asked why, uh, one of the first things is they didn't feel informed they, they were inadequately uh, informed on the, on the subjects. And also they felt like it was a, um, it was a topic that they didn't know where it was going to go, uh, somewhat polarized. And, uh, and so they were, had a, a discomfort in terms of what the bounds of their activity might be. So we really wanted to equip uh, extension personnel. And in this case, I'm using extension with a small e, which means anyone who's doing uh, activities, even in the private sector, who might be working with um, regular interaction with pr uh, livestock producers. Um, build up their capacity in terms of information and comfort level in terms of being able to interact with the clientele on these issues. Obviously, if they're going to uh, um, be doing that, they have to have access to good information. And so uh, our second objective was to provide on-demand access to that information um, through the web, through internet uh, materials. And finally, there's a lot of activities that are just starting up. Uh, we're hearing about some of those going on now. And we really wanted to be, provide a connection between some of those activities. So uh, we're not duplicating efforts. We're not uh, leaving gaps. And I uh, can't do everything, but uh, a big objective of our project is try to bring those together. So we have a, a mission of uh, helping to make animal operations environmentally sound, economically viable, and uh, climate resilient into the future. 
and a, a big part of that is professional development. So most of what I'm going to talk about, our project is not a research project, it is an extension uh, focused project and uh, so we're looking at building capacity. Uh, the main core of our efforts uh, started out with uh, developing an online course and uh, this online course is available. It's been available for about almost two years now. Um, in September will be two years and it, it uh, consists of eight modules, main content modules and as we we're going through what we figured out very early on is uh, getting the conversation started is very important. And so the first three modules, if you look here, have to do with uh, trends and climate. Everybody likes to talk about the weather, or at least they do talk about the weather. And, uh, and they also talk about how the weather impacts them and what they might do next time they get a big storm or whatever. So the first three modules basically take that approach. It's talking about trends, getting people looking at the trends in their area, uh, figuring out what they really are, and then going through and, and looking at impacts. And once we get them engaged in the conversation, or the extension educators feel like they can get them engaged, then we start to bring in some of the, the other things, the climate science aspects, um, what's going on long term, why are greenhouse gases important, where are they coming from on our farms, and what can we do about it. And then uh, and module seven is on policy and regulations, which if you jump right in, if that's the first thing you talk about, that's where you get these polarizing uh, conversations. And so I really encourage you to uh, take a look at this. It's available for anybody online. And, um, and we are either already have the individual materials available so you don't have to take the course or they will soon be available. Um, but we really en encourage people to, to look at taking this course. Just uh, this isn't current, but uh, after about a year of doing the, uh, having the course available, uh, we had 55 people who completed the course and responded to our survey. And uh, what we really found is that, that we were having success in terms of building their, their capacity, in terms of being informed, and also um, about 80% of the people uh, actually told us that they were using this information we're going to use it. And so we're very pleased by that. We also figured out that some people had no in intentions of using the information. They just wanted to um, build up their own uh, skill set or information set. Probably the biggest deterrent is, is time. And that's why uh, it takes about 10 to 12, or excuse me, 12 to 15 hours to go through the course. And not everybody, that doesn't sound like a lot of time, but everybody's busy. And so that's why we're putting all the materials available um, so you don't have to take the course if you want to uh, specifically get some information. Uh, the other big thing we're doing is what we're doing today. Uh, there's still a lot of value for face-to-face -face interaction, having that conversation directly with people. And uh, so this is an example of, of some of the professional development activities we've done uh, prior to the summer, 12 months previous to that. So county educators, county agents are our number one um, audience with this. We have several audiences beyond that, but uh, we figured out we had to be uh, at the table with them when they're getting professional development. So last year was the first year we, we went and um, presented at their conference. You see a couple of regional uh, workshops, work, uh, regional conferences there, and then our National Livestock Environmental, env excuse me, National Livestock and Poultry Environmental Learning Center has a conference every other year. In April, we had a conference in, um, in Seattle. And Joe Harrison here uh, led that effort. And uh, we had about 250 people there, and climate was a big focus of that. So uh, the current year, this summer, and uh, we have a busy summer, and uh, it's going to go on into the fall. Uh, Minnesota had an energy, farm energy conference we were part of. Again, the National Association of County Ag Agents uh, were maintaining our presence there and trying to figure out how to do that into the future. Uh, this conference is a, a major regional effort of ours. And then we have one more uh, major regional effort uh, planned. David Smith here in front and center is um, leading that in November. And uh, David, you want to just raise your hand. If anybody has uh, from that part of the country or, or wants to travel down to Texas, 
uh, for that discussion, uh, make sure you see, see David. I really encourage uh, those of you who just want to get a quick glimpse of what's going on, check out our website, animalagclimatechange.org. Uh, David Smith over here, Schmidt over here, pardon me, uh, had a lot to uh, do with laying that out. We also have an e-extension website. But this, the Animal Ag Climate Change uh, .org website is really focused on our project and, and the deliverables that are coming out. I think it's organized very well. Uh, I encourage you to check that out. On there you'll find, uh, this just says some of the new publications that are there. Uh, we're also moving much more towards having video and other electronic means, uh, doing a lot of videotaping this, uh, this summer. And so there's YouTube things that are going on there and a, a lot of other materials. But a variety of resources available. Uh, in terms of, we want to make sure that we're having some impact. And when it comes to building capacity, uh, what we're doing is, is just whoever takes the course, online course, or attends uh, a meeting like this, we follow up with them about a year later. And, um, or within the, the year. And uh, so, for example, the last time we did this, uh, we asked them their ability to address and do some skills in terms of uh, extension education. And you can see, try this pointer out. You can see up the top uh, beforehand uh, the range in terms of people feeling like they are able or are very able to uh, do some of these skills ranged from one out of four to one, one out of two. So not a big percentage of people felt very confident on this. Um, and we noticeably, there's still room for improvement. This is a pretty new area, but uh, we feel pretty good about being able to take them to the next level. And especially down here in the policy area, we still have a lot of room to go. People feel like they're they're better equipped to be at the table, but not, not maybe speaking out a whole lot. Um, and this is a big area where we, we really want to make some uh, strides because if agriculture isn't at the table, these policies are going to continue to be talked about, and, and we need to be informed, we need to be at the table and uh, engaged. Uh, a lot of efforts going on. You heard about the Climate Hub, other projects. Uh, the, uh, dairy Cap, uh, uh, Sustainable Dairy, I believe, and uh, Cornell also has another uh, fairly big project led by Dr. Wolf. Um, we want to be engaged with those projects, see what kind of tools are coming out, see what kind of information is coming out, and then making sure that that doesn't get lost in the shuffle or doesn't get re redone by somebody else uh, somewhere else. Um, obviously, communicating with climate hubs, and um, partnering with whatever regional efforts are going on within the various regions. Of course, uh, a lot of producers in here. Uh, producers for this project aren't our target audience, but they are the end audience that we want to get to. And so uh, information is only going to get you so far. You have to have uh, a variety of things. You need. One thing you need is tools to help you make decisions. And you also need incentives and things like that. We don't control the purse strings, but we, we can develop tools. And so there are various tools being developed by other efforts, but uh, in each of our regions, we're looking at what tools could we develop. For example, here in the Northeast, uh, Kurt Gooch is, is leading an effort to uh, develop a, a new tool to help dairy producers make better decisions about heat stress mitigation, specifically looking at what facilities and, and practices would reduce the risk of, of cattle uh, experiencing heat stress, and then what methods would be best for um, being cost effective. So with that, I'll, I'll close here and uh, again thank you and, uh, and take any questions you might have.